In India, president's rule is the suspension of state government and imposition of direct central government rule in a state. Under Article 356 of the Constitution of India, in the event that a state government is unable to function according to constitutional provisions, the central government can take direct control of the state machinery. Subsequently, executive authority is exercised through the centrally appointed governor, who has the authority to appoint other administrators to assist them. The administrators are usually non-partisan retired civil servants. When a state government is functioning correctly, it is run by an elected council of ministers responsible to the state's legislative assembly The council is led by the chief minister, who is the de facto chief executive of the state, the governor is only a de jure constitutional head. However, during president's rule, the council of ministers is dissolved, vacating the office of chief minister. Furthermore, the Vedan Sabha is either prorogued or dissolved, necessitating a new election. Similarly, in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, failure of governmental function results in governor's rule, imposed by invoking section 92 of the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir. The state's governor issues the proclamation, after obtaining the consent of the President of India. If it is not possible to revoke governor's rule within six months of imposition, the president's rule under Article 356 of the Indian Constitution is imposed. There is little practical difference between the two provisions. Following its landmark judgment in the 1994 Bamai case, the Supreme Court of India has restricted arbitrary impositions of president's rule. Chhattisgarh and Telangana are the only states where president's rule has yet to be imposed. Topic. Imposition In practice, President's rule has been imposed under different circumstances State legislature is unable to elect a leader as chief minister Breakdown of a coalition Loss of majority in the assembly Elections postponed for unavoidable reasons if approved by both houses, President's rule can continue for six months. It can be extended for a maximum of three years with the approval of the parliament done every six months. If the Lok Sabha is dissolved during this time, the rule is valid for 30 days from the first sitting of the Lok Sabha provided that this continuance has already been approved by Rajya Sabha. The 44th Amendment Act of 1978 introduced a new provision to put a restraint on the power of the parliament to extend president's rule in a state. According to this provision, President's rule can only be extended over a year every six months under following conditions. There is already a national emergency throughout India, or in the whole or any part of the state. Election Commission certifies that elections cannot be conducted in the concerned state. President's rule can be revoked at any time by the President and does not need the Parliament's approval. Until the mid-1990s, President's rule was often imposed in states through abusing the authority of governors who were in collusion with the central government. The Supreme Court of India in March 1994 instituted a rule by which such abuse has been drastically reduced. Criticism <inaudible> 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 Article 356 gave wide powers to the central government to assert its authority over a state if civil unrest occurs, and the state government does not have the means to end it. Though the purpose of this article is to give more powers to central government to preserve the unity and integrity of the nation, it has often been misused by the ruling parties at the centre, who used it as a pretext to dissolve state governments ruled by political opponents. Thus, it is seen by many as a threat to the federal state system. Since the adoption of Indian Constitution in 1950, the central government has used this article several times to dissolve elected state governments by imposing President's rule. The article was used for the first time in Uttar Pradesh 1954. It was also used in the state of Patiala in East Punjab States Union and during the Vimachana Samaram to dismiss the democratically elected communist state government of Kerala on 31 July 1959. In the 1970s and 1980s, it was common for the central government to dismiss state governments led by opposition parties. The Indira Gandhi regime and post-emergency Janata Party were noted for this practice. Indira Gandhi's government between 1966 and 1977 is known to have imposed president's rule 39 times in different states. 
Similarly, the Janata Party which came to power after the emergency issued President's rule in nine states which were ruled by Congress. The practice was limited only after the Supreme Court established strict guidelines for imposing the President's rule in its ruling on the S. R. Bomb I. V. Union of India case in 1994. This landmark judgment has helped curtail the widespread misuse of Article 356. The judgment established strict guidelines for imposing President's rule. Subsequent pronouncements by the Supreme Court in Jharkhand and other states have further limited the scope for misuse of Article 356. Only since the early 2000s has the number of cases of imposition of President's rule has been drastically reduced. Article 356 has always been the focal point of a wider debate of the federal structure of government in Indian polity. The Sarkaria Commission Report on Centre-State Relations 1983 has recommended that Article 356 must be used, "...very sparingly, in extreme cases, as a measure of last resort, when all the other alternatives fail to prevent or rectify a breakdown of constitutional machinery in the state." Dr. Ambedkar also said that it would be like a dead letter, i.e. would be used rarely. <laughs> List of instances <laughs> See also Article 370 Direct rule Federal intervention a similar procedure used in Argentina Federalism in India Part 18 of the Constitution of India Sarkaria Commission